Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having an absolutely incredible day. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. In news <clears throat> that was incredibly popular, but a lot of websites tried to make it into like a controversial kind of thing. Market intelligence platform for on-chain and social metrics, they're known as Santiment, tweeted that the XRP ledger has seen less activity compared to 2021 and 2022, as is to be expected during a bear market. However, this has not stopped whales and sharks from accumulating massive amounts of XRP. Wallets that have between 100,000 and 100, geez, it's a huge number, and 100 million XRP are now holding 7.89 billion coins at present, while a year ago it was 7.16 billion compared to 7.89. As such, wallets holding 100,000 to 100 million XRP now we're holding 26% of the entire supply of XRP. Here's the tweet right here. The news being that as the markets uh, may be low or lower than they've been before, a lot of people continuously question if companies and institutions and people are actually still buying a lot of these coins. Part of the confusion comes down to People assume if the coin's price is going down that people are selling in mass and that no one is buying at all. This is why often we have a conversation about OTC, over-the-counter buying, because this is how rich people buy stuff for everything. You don't walk into a store and simply buy. You have a very special way and a very special relationship with cryptocurrency exchanges. This was, as you might have imagined, incredibly popular news. Uh, sharks and whales have accumulated 1.5 billion XRP between October 2021 and the same period in 2023. The negative aspect, if you will, is that a lot of people were talking about how this only goes to show that XRP is centralized. Why would any coin have anything like this? It's clearly centralized. Well, this just goes to show only a few people are holding tons of XRP. It has to be centralized. And I and I give you this one because I know a lot of people probably haven't been here in a while or maybe you're just coming back or hello, if you've been here before, maybe you missed a segment where I was talking about this. This article on the screen is from a year ago. However, even more recently, I just wanted to show you that this has been going on for a while. This isn't like a, oh my gosh, since yesterday. Well, that's crazy. Nope. For those of you not looking at the screen, it says Bitcoin long-term holders now own 80%. Now own 80% of the realized market cap. We found out even just a couple of weeks ago from Santiment, the same exact people, who gave us that XRP news that we just had, that it is now believed to be 80 to 85%, that is 80 dash eight five percent of all the bitcoin that is out there is now believed to be held by the richest wallets on the planet it is wallets that have over starting from 100 bitcoin and higher <clears throat> they've been accumulating massive amounts of bitcoin centralizing the amount of holders who are holding as opposed to the, you know, 8 billion people on the planet who are supposed to each have their own a little chunk of Bitcoin. Uh, so once again, put your hand down because I'm sh I know for a fact there's always one. There's always one person who, oh, pff, of course he's talking about XR. It's coin centralized and just wanted to let you know, as always, uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, the holdings of these coins are also hyper 
centralized have been for a while and probably will always be in the future as we continue to hear of these companies and institutions who are buying large amounts of XRP and Bitcoin and Ethereum and how much they hold. So yeah, just thought I'd share that news. The first port of the portion of the news was very popular. The second portion I had to once again deliver to people because they would have screamed at the top of a mountain as opposed to realizing that Bitcoin is also uh, heavily focused and centralized among a very, very small group of people. That's the XRP whales and sharks and bears and frogs and tadpoles and li li livers. I, I, I don't know. And Bitcoin holders are uh, still buying. Uh, yeah, everyone's everyone's uh, still uh, still a buying, regardless of if the price is down or up, because that's what. Uh, Long-term investors do. They're expecting XRP to hit twenty-five dollars, Bitcoin to hit a million. So they 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 buy when the prices are low. That's the whales and other animals news. Yeah, yeah. Let's move on. And I think this is supposed to be negative news. I'm I'm honestly not i'm honestly not sure at all the australian government has announced their intention to introduce legislation that would grant the central bank the authority to regulate digital wallet providers a move that could affect services like apple pay google pay oh i guess that's it okay currently apple pay google pay and china's wechat pay despite their rapid growth in recent years, are not officially designated as payment systems within Australia. This has placed them outside the scope of regulatory framework, and we all know that's a, that's a gigantic no-no. Uh-uh. The proposed rules would empower the Reserve Bank of Australia, or the RBA, to oversee digital wallet payments, much like it does with credit card networks and other financial transactions. Additionally, it would grant the treasurer the authority to instruct regulators the to be able to, there we go, assess any potential risks posed by payment platforms to the country. Treasurer Jim Chamlers stated that the government is actively trying to address the risk that digital payment services pose. I'll work backwards quickly and then get to the actual main point. This is an actual issue for countries because they do realize that digital payments are kind of taking over. And this is why you see such a large scale of institutions and banks and countries uh, talking about crypto regulations and needing to get things under control. There's like, there are constant charts that you can like use to extrapolate on the actual future of something. And one of them for a while, maybe you've seen it on this channel before, has been for Bitcoin. It not only has to do with the price, but also like actual adoption of the actual currency, the item in, in question at any given point. So if you can see that mathematically there are, let's say, 800 random number, new people who are buying Bitcoin, getting a Bitcoin wallet, getting into the market every single day. Over the course of a year, you can see how many people, <coughs> sorry, still sick, in a country, um have purchased Bitcoin or gotten into the network. Cool. Remember the other day, week ago, where we had news that I think in one day, there were 700,000 new Bitcoin wallets. So if you pump that 800 up to, let's say 20,000, and you say every single day, as opposed to 700,000, every single day, there's 20,000 new people in the Bitcoin network. We see that Every four years, based off of the actual movements in the market and the market cycles, the amount of new people who jump into the market also increases whenever there's an actual bull run. If we extrapolate from the last 10 years and we can see into the future by 2045, you can then see that the, the euro, the yen, the Australian dollar, you name it, may all actually be in trouble because we then have a world where we have 1.8 billion people into Bitcoin. That's the generalized idea. And this is one of the reasons why we're seeing so much regulation now when it comes to like the movement of payments within the digital world. 
because they know that they can't really control the creation of Bitcoin or anything else. So one way to kind of get it under control is by simply layering and blanketing any type of anti-money laundering, know your customer rules directly on top of it. And it usually only applies to crypto exchanges, not the actual chain itself. Or it does sometimes, but it doesn't. But that's also besides the point. This news was relatively popular. And it made a I saw it on a couple of websites and people were discussing that, like, how could the bank do this? How, and it's like, why is there always so much confusion when a bank does banky things? When, when, when a bank says we want to protect the sovereignty of the money that we print because we have control over this system. Everyone goes, you can't do that in freedom. And I'm like, that's not that's not how anything has worked for the last like 7000 years. And I don't see a widespread uh, creation of this brand new world, especially in a world where even people within the cryptocurrency space don't even care about decentralization anymore. So upon the news that the, the Central Bank of Australia, I'm not going to call it the Reserve Bank. I hate when, when, when countries have like the Royal Bank, the so-and-so bank, the Bank of Reserves. No, you're, you're a central bank. You are the central bank of that country. So for sake of argument, I'm only going to call them the central bank decides to announce that they're going to get digital payments under control or give rules and regulations or like heaven forbid get google pay apple pay and amazon is, is there an amazon pay i feel like that's a thing under control everyone throws their hands into the air and they act as if like it's some weird thing that we've never heard from before in our lives so cool in news that i think was meant to be negative Another central bank has announced that they want to make sure that they continue to maintain power because he who prints the money controls the power. So now they're going to try and make sure that all these companies and cryptocurrencies also uh, fall in line. Sure, we, we all knew this, right? We knew that that was going to be a thing. How, how many of you thought that Australia and Canada and the US were going to be uh, one gigantic economic free-for-all? Oh, two people? Oh, that's a that that's a bit worrying. That's the logic news. And yeah. Let's move on. Also in Oh. Okay, sure, why not? Stablecoin issuer Circle has announced that they have begun minting and creating their Circle coin natively on the Ethereum layer two scaling solution known as Polygon. USDC is accessible to users and developers without bridging the stablecoin from Ethereum to another blockchain. Thank goodness. If any of you have ever bridged anything, it's like pulling teeth. It is so completely annoying. I, I await the days when the cryptocurrency infrastructure is as seamless as sending an email. There's so many times when you're trying to bridge or send or tra it's it's very 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 annoying. Uh, Circle Mint and Circle's developer application programming interface APIs now support Polygon-based USDC tapping into Polygon's scaling capabilities. And here's a tweet for it right here. Not the most exciting news, but once again in the cryptocurrency space. Uh, for some reason, uh, news about hiring or layoffs or about stable coins always end up being popular. I do, and I told you we would, be seeing this pattern in the last like month or two where Coinbase is trying to make the illusion of their stable coin being a lot more decentralized and for the people, by the people, yada, yada, yada. We got this news after Coinbase created their layer two solution, Base, when they added uh, Circle Coin to Base, and they were like, oh my gosh, a brand new coin. And it's like, you mean the one you're financing? Of course, you were adding it onto your chain. We've seen like four or five other chains in the last month, I think, that have also added it. And now Polygon, as Polygon basically is, the scaling solution that Ethereum has been looking for since like 1982. Of course, you add it to Polygon as well. So not ex 
exciting to me at all. However, very popular news. I'm also, uh, I, you know, you learn more and more every day. I also was unaware that there are a large amount of uh, individuals within the cryptocurrency space uh, who actively hold stable coins. But I mean, like, hold them like. You know, like this person has like eighty four thousand dollars worth of a stable coin, and I and I, me, I mentally don't get it. I can't figure out why, but a lot of people do it. There was recently a story, um, some guy, I think in Asia or something like that. I think he lost a hundred and ten thousand worth of his tether because he put it into some protocol and he was using it for something. And I'm like. You know, like other better coins exist. Like, what's the point of you transacting in a digital version of the a digitaler version of the U.S. dollar? Cool. So Circle now has their USDC on Polygon. You know, I guess golf clap for their brand new initiative. And yeah, let's move on. Also in we we knew this right we all we were all well aware that this was definitely going to to be a thing it's not it's not just me right okay the bank for international settlements or the bis a global central bank that serves other central banks has designed a brand new system that will help authorities track bitcoin trading activities around the world this was said by reuters um, I don't know if you missed it before. The way that things work is that governments typically want their slice of the pie in the form of taxation. We have known for a long time that Bitcoin is not anonymous. It is pseudonymous. And as I've been telling all of you since the beginning of this year, something weird was taking place. So we've seen a massive amount of energy moving towards regulation and laws and taxation and things like that within the cryptocurrency space. But I've also told you there's something also else afoot where I keep seeing Visa has partnered with MetaMask. MetaMask has partnered with PayPal. PayPal has partnered with this company. You can now buy cryptocurrencies on this website using PayPal. You can now use, you, you, you get the idea. Everything is constantly merging with everything else. The usual uh, s statement that we receive is that it's to, you know, make buying crypto easier for you. There's never been an easier way. Just link up all your devices and put everything together. And one of the, 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 the red flags for a lot of this is that all... Of your previous cryptocurrency transactions, when you link them to PayPal, that is to say, if you take, I, I believe you can take crypto off of PayPal. The same exact thing if you link your PayPal to your MetaMask, or if you link your Visa or your MasterCard to your MetaMask, they have a record then, the Visa, of every other transaction that you've done before because it's linked to their system. They need to accumulate all of this information for know your customer anti-money laundering rules. It is fairly logical because that's how the world has worked for a while. We live under this idea that for some reason we are always doing something wrong and our transactions need to be need to be traced. So under the news that the central bank's central bank created a new system to help people and authorities track Bitcoin transactions, because they once again actively believe that we are always doing something nefarious and or evil or something terrible. Imagine my surprise, the amount of people within the cryptocurrency space who were completely, excuse the term, up in arms. Who could, I can't, why would they be doing this? One of the main reasons why Bitcoin is not banned all around the world is because you can track the transactions. That's one of the main focus points. That's the idea of the popularity amongst blockchain for governments, central bank digital currencies, and for banks. It's because any slippage, any type of, you know, we couldn't keep track of this thing before can now be actively kept track of. 
So if at any point you might have maybe done something on a blockchain back in 2011, you have that same Bitcoin address, you link it up to PayPal and to MetaMask and all these other things because you want to make sure that you can buy crypto with ease. You take your crypto off of there, put it onto your cryptocurrency wallet. Well, guess what? You've now linked all those things together and they know and are able to track your payments and have always been able to do so for a very long time. So the central bank's central bank basically came out and said they're making their own system because they understand that Bitcoin is going to probably be around forever. And I say at least the next 117 years until good old uh, 2140, when the last fragment of a Bitcoin is actually mined. So it seems completely logical that the people who print money and tell other central banks what they should be doing is going to want to keep their power that they have in some sort of way. And that's being done by tracking transactions. Is it a good thing? No. But to pretend like we didn't know this was going to be a thing, I'm not sure where people are constantly being flabbergasted from. According to the Bank for International Settlements, <clears throat> the monitoring system will give authorities a clearer picture of how, when, and where the cryptocurrency is being used. Work on the project, co um, codenamed Atlas, wow, started five years ago at the Dutch Central Bank, a member of the BIS, because that's how they all work. However, the BIS said recent happenings within the crypto ecosystem have affected the platform's potential value. Notably, the crypto ecosystem since last year has been a mash of institutional collapses, bankruptcies, market volatility, and regulatory onslaughts. Large crypto entities like FTX and Terra Luna collapsed, creating a prolonged bear market that spilled well way too long into 2023. According to the report, the monitoring system is a proof of concept that relies on data from on-chain and off-chain activities. BIS mentioned that monitoring and tracking crypto cross-border flows is a major concern for central banks because that's how they work. Did you, I had this, remember we were talking about this like a year or two ago. I was like, you know that these people who have set up this structure, like it's for them, right? You don't live under the illusion or delusion that central banks care about you or your families, right? You don't think that economic policies are made to better your life because we would have an inflation rate of zero. They would simply all go, let's stop inflation for 10 years so that people can pay their bills and get their rent under control. You know that they do what they do for them, right? This is, you know, like the rich get richer. They, they want to own and continuously own everything forever. So when you hear that there's a new potential economic system like crypto slash Bitcoin that could revolutionize the world's economy and allow people to have high levels of economic sovereignty, sovereignty doesn't matter. Um, that's how banks typically. So anyway, yes, very unpopular news. I am not sure how logic keeps scaring people or they just, you must have known before that the, the central bank, central bank was going to do something like this, right? That doesn't, anyway, that's the um, BIS news. I assume we will be hearing from them again sometime next year. They're usually like twice in the news per year. Central banks are going to do what central banks need to do to protect their monetary supply and the creation of it. So not, not a lot of confusion there. That's the uh, bank news. Moving along. Also in, sure, why not? Very, very popular news. This ties into the... Um, we are currently at the point in the market where <clears throat> a large number of uh, very wealthy individuals have begun to stick their head out of the, uh, what's that thing? The groundhog hole, that thing. And basically tell us 
that the crypto winter is ending and we should be buying cryptocurrencies. You've seen the last couple of videos. If you haven't, go watch them. What are you doing? All these rich people are telling us how great crypto is, how great Bitcoin is, how great the market is, the price predictions we've been seeing, the $625,000 Bitcoin, the $35,000 Ether, all that kind of stuff. And this is like part 7.0. Recently, Bitcoin has been receiving growing support from traditional financial institutions as a hedge against inflation and an investment opportunity. To, to, for, for those of you for reference, it always has been. Bitcoin has always been amazing and great. But now it's even greater because like we get the rich people who told us that they weren't buying before. Now they're buying and or they've already bought and they have so much Bitcoin and crypto that now they feel good telling everyone else, you know, now's the time for you to get into it as well because that's how being rich works. The support has emerged at a time when Bitcoin is making efforts to ignite the next crazy mega ultra super fantastic bull market. In line with this trend, Jefferies, a leading global investment firm, has become the latest organization to endorse Bitcoin as a critical protection against potential monetary policies that could devalue fiat currencies and reignite inflation uh, without having to read any further because it is a, a bit of a long article. Uh, basically, wh what? Behind the scenes, all these uh, very wealthy people are of the mindset that the US dollar is about to collapse like yesterday. Like it's, it's already collapsed. It's in the ground. And that the only saving grace for the world is Bitcoin. I find the timing of it a, a little a little a little suspicious as we get closer to the actual having and this is typically typically the amount of time where bitcoin would be rising before the actual having takes place. I think they're doing it of course for attention. You want to you know you put your name out there, throw your name in the hat, say look at you know we predicted this was going to take place. And it's like okay, cool, calm down a, a little tiny bit. To say, to say Bitcoin is a critical protection against monetary policies, I would, I would direct you to the wall that is 2020 and 2021, where Bitcoin collapsed along with the rest of the world's economy as we were all afraid of getting coughed on, what have you. Um, so yeah, this was, is this also the same exact thing? Eh, no, there's something else. No, there's something else. Anyway, yeah, very popular news. Uh, Jeffrey's investment firm uh, has come forward to say that Bitcoin is incredible. Uh, going over the news every single day, I do not remember saying the name Jeffrey's like literally ever before. So I guess this is a brand new institution who probably over the last two years was buying massive amounts of Bitcoin. And we can only assume assume how much that they actually have. They have not told us and probably never will tell us. But you can assume if you're worth billions, I I would I would throw the number hundreds of billions. This was very popular news because they were Jeffries. Uh, they probably have more than one Bitcoin. We can all agree they probably have more than 5,000 Bitcoin. You usually, as a gigantic financing firm, uh, would not waste your time talking about another asset class unless you were like really, really deep in the cookie jar. So cool. Wonderful. I assume tomorrow or the day after there will also be some other rich person news where some other person will tell us how amazing and fantastic Bitcoin is and how they knew the whole time and everyone needs to be buying it and everyone should have been buying it over and over and over and over and over and over again. I can't wait, cannot wait until we get to a $100,000 Bitcoin because the amount of people who are going to come out of the woodworks telling you, you, you didn't buy Bitcoin when it was at 25,000. What do you, what do you mean is going to be just absolutely disgusting. But we are also rapidly, I think, rapidly entering the world where a lot of people will probably only, only ever have maybe a million Satoshis, maybe half a million Satoshis. I think it's not that far off. 
And a lot of people are going to be very shocked when it happens. Uh, yes, I do sincerely hope that you have all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it is absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and or supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.